Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. It's a slightly different video today. Um, I tried to film this in my normal way about three times and I had to delete it because it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel right for me to appear on camera um, because because of the subject matter. Um, it's in relation to Sinead O'Connor's passing three days ago. And as I was filming, each time I filmed, I just kept thinking about, you know, the circumstances of her son's passing a year and a half ago. And, you know, that picture that um, keeps coming up with them holding each other. I kept thinking about that while I was filming and I just couldn't film because it was just too... It was just too sad and I, I thought I can't I can't actually sit in front of the camera. So this is why I'm doing a voiceover for this um for this video. I wasn't actually gonna speak about Sinead O'Connor. I've never followed her career. I know she was very controversial and she always stuck out for me when she did the video um for nothing compares to you. That was prominent in, I guess, many, many people's psyche. And it was also sad because she's only three years older than I am. And she's, you know, by all accounts, gone through so much emotional turmoil in her life. And I guess her son's passing was something that she just couldn't, I mean, understandably, is something she couldn't deal with. So I said I wasn't going to speak about her. There was no reason for me to speak about her until I'd seen reports about an email she'd sent to peers a few years ago. That's resurfaced online. And I'll share that with you now. This article is taken from the independent.co.uk. Yesterday, Friday, the 28th of July, 2023. As I read the article, there are certain words that I'll change just to make it more acceptable to YouTube. Sinead O'Connor's withering Piers Morgan snub resurfaces as presenter pays tribute. Broadcaster had apparently invited the late singer to appear on ITV's Good Morning Britain. Sinead O'Connor's brutal rejection of Piers Morgan's invitation to feature as a guest on ITV's Good Morning Britain has resurfaced following her passing age 56. On Wednesday 26th of July, the Irish singer's family confirmed her untimely passing. It is with great sadness that we announce the passing of our beloved Sinead, they wrote in a statement. Her family and friends are devastated and have requested privacy at this very difficult time. Since word of her passing, numerous high-profile figures have paid tribute, including Morgan, who remembered her as a wondrously gifted singer, fiercely intelligent, highly amusing, complex uncompromising, provocative woman with many demons. Accompanying the post, the 58-year-old broadcaster included a photo of the two standing together in the ITV studio. Knew her for 35 years and we had some ferocious spats, but also some great guinness fueled makeups. She was a unique character, sad day, the broadcaster, 58, tweeted. To the delight of many O'Connor fans, one such spat has resurfaced across social media. Last year, the Nothing Compares to You singer reportedly shared a screenshot of an email she sent to one of Morgan's producers on Twitter after they requested her appearance on the ITV morning show, which Morgan left in 2021.
I'll let you guys read this next bit because um, I don't want to upset YouTube. Along with her NSWF response to Morgan's TV invite, she wrote that she hoped it made him chortle tea out of his nose, according to Metro UK. Soon after, Morgan responded to O'Connor's post, confirming that he did indeed chortle my tea out of my nose. Hi Sinead, a delight to hear from you, he said before clarifying three things. A. I haven't hosted a breakfast show for a year. B. I actually fancy you, not Megan. Think it's the G.I. Jane hair thing. C. I was so sorry to hear about your son. Hope you're okay. His final point was in reference to the passing of her son Shane, who took his own life in January 2022. Morgan's exit from GMB came after he made controversial remarks regarding the Duchess of Sussex's tell-all interview with Oprah Winfrey. While the Grammy-winning Irish singer was best known for her rendition of Prince's Nothing Compares to You, she was also a fierce defender and advocate for women's rights and equality. So in his broadcast, I think it's Uncensored, I saw that last night, and it just made me think, you know, whilst his tribute appeared heartfelt and sincere, it really made me question his psychology as as a person, as a human being. Um, I'll try to explain that. In his broadcast, Morgan acknowledged Sinead's profound mental health struggles. Um, like Harry, Sinead also lost her mother in similar circumstances. And I had seen that she'd sent Harry a message of support, empathising with his mental health difficulties. As outspoken and brutally honest and controversial as she was, Morgan described his relationship with Sinead as bittersweet. Um, as far as I'm aware, he's never dared to speak ill of her, but if you have evidence to the contrary, please feel free to let me know. And this is, this is evident with regard to his religion. I tried to find anything about Piers Morgan's reaction to Sinead O'Connor ripping up a picture of the Pope many years ago. I wasn't able to find anything. However, I did come across this article from the Irish Post in which he claimed to be outraged by the Met Gala's Catholic theme in 2018 and he claimed that his religion was being mocked at a fashion show. And this is what I talk about with regard to, you know, target practice, who he targets in his bullying crusade. I'm not aware of him saying anything against Sinead O'Connor which offended millions of Catholics around the world. But he's outraged at the Met Gala's theme. And when it was pointed out to him that the Vatican itself had approved the theme, Piers raged, well, I'll be having words with Pope Francis. Holy Father needs to think again about this. I'm not happy about that. 
So why would he be offended by a fashion show, which we all know has controversial themes? You know, claiming to be offended because his religion has been mocked. But someone, you know, well-known celebrity who he says he's known for many years, rips up a picture of the Pope and he apparently says nothing. If he has said anything, please let me know in the comments because I am unable to find anything. I just thought that was an interesting observation. So going back to the mental health aspect, it puzzled me as to why Morgan would fully acknowledge Sinead O'Connor's mental health issues, but finds it really difficult to accept the same for Harry and even dismiss Meghan's claims of the thoughts that she had about exiting. Based on his continuous rants about the couple, it would be reasonable for anyone to assume that he actually hates them. But here's how he's responded to that assertion. Again, and how you're talking about in the context of the wider hatred, which, to be fair, you were uh, a real pioneer in that hatred of Meghan Markle years ago. Years before, I don't hate uh, Meghan Jeremy Markle. And I don't. No, 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 hang on. I think it's hang on, hang on. Well, I, I mean, I, you, well, hang you, on, you have made a career out of. You said I hate Meghan Markle. Her. Let me be clear. I've never said I hate Meghan Markle. I don't hate Meghan Markle. I hate what she's done to the royal family and to the monarchy and to the reputation of Britain. Only tonight, the New York Times has carried a major op-ed piece absolutely trashing this country as a racist country with a racist institution at the head of it, a callous institution that should be dismantled. So, yeah, I see real damage in what Meghan Markle and Harry have both done now to the reputation of his country and to our monarchy. So, yeah, but I don't hate them individually as people, and if you know, in relation to the Clarkson column, which he's now issued a mere culpa over, I didn't think he should have uh, put that in the column for for my personal view. But he's now said he wishes he hadn't either. So you know, I don't see what that has to do with the wider picture of these two trashing their families and now demanding an apology. So based on what I've just played, if I heard him correctly, Morgan is unhappy that the couple have, in his view trash the royal family. This is Morgan speaking to Keith Allen in a film that Keith Allen produced many years ago following the passing of Princess Diana and he scrutinises the circumstances surrounding that event. It's weird that at a time when you know the establishment can think of nothing worse than Dodi Fayed, son of Muhammad, marrying and possibly impregnating Diana, that she's conducting a major international offensive against landmines with all the crippling economic problems that would bring for the British establishment again. And, the British and, and America. And America. If you add all these to the mix, then if you were ever going to do something dodgy to Diana, that's the time you would do it. She'd become trouble, as she used to say to me. I'm trouble to them. I won't go away. I won't go quiet. When you listen to that, does it sound as if Morgan is pro-royal family? Does it sound like that to you? Or does it sound like he's casting aspersions against the royal family, implying that they played some role in Diana's demise. Why the contradiction? Does he have a selective memory? Would it be within the realms of possibility to assume that he's been incentivized to be the royal family's guard dog when it comes to Harry and Meghan? Now, if you've ever observed a bully you know that he will always aggressively zero in on the person they believe is less likely to retaliate, but he will deal passively with those by whom he feels intimidated. 
Case in point, Sinead O'Connor. From what I've observed recently, he has never dared to say anything bad about her, even though she's done so many controversial things, way above what Harry and Meghan have ever done, in my humble opinion. So with regard to the psychology of him as a bully, really, what I've seen is that the fragility of a bully's ego means that he always requires an audience in order to perform. So in other words, he, in my mind anyway, he knows that if he ever had said anything against Sinead O'Connor, the backlash would be have been something that he had never experienced before and that's why he chooses his targets very carefully he's very strategic in who he goes for now you'd think that someone of morgan's perceived intelligence would know that using his platform to relentlessly trash a woman who refuses to give him the time of day would come to the realisation that his efforts are in vain. But I guess it's only a matter of time before Morgan becomes just another one of the dominoes that will eventually fall. So guys, that's going to do it for this video. It's relatively short um, because I couldn't... I think this warranted slightly different treatment, um, but I just wanted to sort of bring to your attention again (laughs) the hypocrisy of yet another broadcaster when it comes to Harry and Meghan. I know that Harry is due to appear in court again I think it's in January because um excuse me one of his cases is going to trial um one of these um not phone hacking I think it's the other one anyway it's to do with the invasion of privacy And uh, let's see what Piers Morgan has to say about all that when the time comes. Because he didn't turn up in court the last time. But he had mouth in public to say what he said. (laughs) I just find it so interesting. So guys, if your thoughts were provoked in any way, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet become a house guest, don't forget to hit subscribe and activate all of your notifications. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are with regard to this. Do you have similar observations or am I barking up the wrong tree (laughs) with regard to this? Because I know I can, you know, think things that other people don't think. But let me know what you guys have to say. My thoughts are with Sinead O'Connor's remaining three children. And, you know, for me, it's just incredibly sad. It's really, really sad. And um, I I just wanted to be sensitive in this video. So, you know, you may see me do videos like this from time to time when I feel that the treatment is warranted. So as I say, guys, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and you shall catch me in the next video.